Alright, so this is just a quick lesson on uh, how large bodies of water affect climate. Uh, and when we refer to large bodies of water here, we're not talking about uh, rivers or small lakes or anything like that. We're talking about large bodies of water. So any of the oceans or uh, the Gulf of Mexico, stuff like that, those are the ones that uh, we'll be uh, looking at uh, this evening. So, um, And for this, we are looking at two types of uh, areas. First of all, coastal cities. Um, so we're thinking, oh, Miami or, say, Vancouver, for a Canadian example, and then uh, also inland cities. So uh, the Brantford, Hamilton area are examples, or a really good example of this would be um, the prairies or something like that out, out in uh, western Canada. So uh, for uh, another look at this, we have, uh, so here you go, here will be our land, and here is our large body of water with some very hefty waves, and um, here are different cities. So we're going to have over here our inland city, so maybe a city on the prairies, or even for a closer example, say Hamilton or Brantford. City A, and over here we have our coastal city, uh, say Vancouver, City B. Now the, di now the different climates between these two locations is due to something called specific heat. Now water is specific heat. Uh, well here we go, we'll, I'll show you an example. The sun up here shines down solar radiation into the water and to the land. Now what happens is water's specific energy or specific heat is 4.5 times greater than that of earth or soil. Now what specific heat means is that it takes four and a half or it takes a certain amount of energy to warm something off or to expel the energy from something. Now this means that um, water takes four and a half times more energy or four and a half times longer using the same uh, solar radiation. Uh, it takes four and a half times longer to heat up and to cool down. This then has a direct effect on the climate of the area as the water will uh, heat or cool the air in the area. This can be seen in the temperature ranges for each of the cities. We'll start with City A, or the inland city. Um, uh, so what you're going to see is, say, a maximum temperature, or average temperature of the area being around, say, 30 degrees Celsius. That's quite high, but that's just, say, a max temperature for the area. And then it can get down as low as, say, minus 20 degrees in the winter. Now, for the uh, the coastal city, um, the max temperature will be uh, lower due to the the specific energy of the of the water cooling the the air and the area in the uh, in the in the summer. Sorry, so you say your max temperature will be maybe 23 degrees Celsius as your max, and then your minimum will be say one degree Celsius in the winter. Now, this uh, shows varying temperature ranges then, so in your inland city you have a temperature range of 50 degrees Celsius, which is a huge range, and then your coastal city only has a temperature range of about 22 degrees Celsius. So as you can see from the differing, uh, for the differing cities we have a much wider temperature range here in, in the inland city than here in the coastal city. Now what does this show us is that uh, areas near large bodies of water have a much more moderate climate. And again this is due to the specific heat of the water, um, keeping, it, keeping the air much cooler in the summer and warming the air in the winter. Just to reiterate, the specific heat of water is 4.5 times that of uh, earth, meaning that it takes much longer for water to heat up or cool down uh, depending on the time of the year and this results in a much smaller temperature range throughout the year. 
This causes coastal regions to have cooler summers and warmer winters, which is why even in the dead of winter, for say us here in Ontario, uh, when we're getting uh, pelted with snow, Vancouver might only be receiving uh, a fair amount of rain instead.